I, you know, made a little introduction, but you're obviously the best person to introduce yourself. Could you maybe explain uh, briefly what you did uh, before Miro and how you ended up in this building this particular company and why you knew it was the right idea for you? Uh, yes, so I did the very usual uh, business school uh, in Lyon. Uh, I went to a to, to a bank for six months that I did not like so much the ambience and everything. So I understood that I needed to do something for myself. Uh, so I went on uh, five or six years ago to try to start my first company, which actually there's my first intern that I, have, I have not seen in six years. It's just here today, so that's fun. Uh, Farid. Um, it was on the, it was a consumer credit on internet. Uh, the business model wasn't so good. So I, I stopped it after like one year and six months. And then I went on to build other companies that are still okay now. Um, one in the IoT uh, industry, so it's a uh, motorcycle uh, lockers uh, connected to the iPhone. To the iPhone, and another one is a very again usual uh, what we call in French SS2Z. So um, something like you develop uh, mobile applications and websites for clients, basically. And so three years ago, like not two years something ago, I uh, ran across the, ran into. A, someone that is now a friend of mine that had a good idea on the photograph industry and I decided to go after it, basically. Very simple. So how come you ended up in so many different industries? Was it always opportunistic? You found a great idea, a great person to follow? Or did you have at that point like passions uh, one after the no, other? When I failed the first one, I was not uh, earning money for like 18 months, maybe 24 months. That's what I was bartending, by the way. <laughs> I don't know where you saw that, but as I was in, in bartending at night. And so I went after something where I knew I could make money. Uh, I know how to sell. So basically, I went after, uh, I went and sold mobile applications, like very usual when you fail a company, you go and you took, you took your previous developers and you tried to do something with it. So basically, okay, I have like 10 developers that try to, to do work with it. So basically, I went to, to sell. Uh, mobile application, the IoT business, I wanted to understand the, um, in English it's more complicated, the, like something more uh, real than just website and stuff like that. So I went after like trying to understand, to understand the industry basically when, like trying to provide real uh, objects, yeah. which is very difficult. So I would not recommend that uh, as a first company because it takes much time, much money and it's very difficult. And the last one is because I wanted to actually really find uh, an idea which was scalable, because uh, I was ambitious at the time. And um, and so when I found the idea that was like good to me, I just dropped the other ones. I just wanted to. Cool. So yeah, make the internet great again. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, cool. So yeah. So in in a in a few in a few numbers now. Uh, so I think we're gonna uh, talk about you know how you scale because I guess uh, that's everyone's you know question how you achieve that so today uh, correct me if the if the the numbers are off uh, but you're in over 100 countries uh, you have over 40,000 professional photographers working with you more how many 58,000 professional photographers uh, you have uh, around 200 employees and you raise how much 350. 350 employees. Oh my God, <laughs> even better. Uh, and you and you raised uh, 45 uh, million dollars this uh, this summer. Uh, yeah, this yeah, summer. this summer for a total of like 67, 68. 68. Uh, yeah. So really incredible numbers. Um, can you take us back to to the early days? Uh, what what happened in in the first six months of your company? And what was your your biggest problem? What were you not sleeping sleeping uh, because of at night? Uh, at that time? Well, so the first six months I was not full time in the company because I had uh, other uh, companies to run. It took me time to find the uh, CEOs to put to the other companies. So I joined the company full time nine, nine months actually after starting it. Uh, well, it was actually not so not so difficult. Uh, I wanted, When you start something, you need to prove first that uh, you have something that makes sense for clients. So I basically hired interns, like sales. Uh, that I asked to sell thing that I could not produce, of course. So uh, it was first in Paris. Uh, like I, okay, you, you, you take care of finding a few photographers that look okay, and you just call like randomly, bluntly clients every day. So the the first few interns had to call 100 clients per day, and try different pitch, different prices, uh, etc., and try to measure the good metrics. 
So after like what uh, was the good what was the good metrics for you in the beginning? Well, I wanted to have only uh, I wanted to have at least two clients that say yes and order something per day per intern. So out of 100 clients, I wanted to have a two percent conversion. Um, first, I was uh, targeting too high in the prices, so it was not functioning very well. Then, the, the, of course, the pitch was not good, so you can you can offer the same service if you don't know how to pitch it anyway. It doesn't work, so you need to first to fine tune the pitch. And um, and after like uh, two to three weeks, we had like the three guys uh, uh, interns. So that doesn't really cost a lot at first. It's a good way to start a company is to get interns. Well, it was easier actually a few years back because now everybody does the same thing, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so you don't have so many interns, I guess. But uh, available, I mean. Um, and so, yeah, so you have one guy just in charge of finding photographers. The other was in charge of finding clients in Paris. Um, it looked quite okay, quite rapidly. Like after one month, I knew there was something to do. It was first only in the real estate markets because I guess you cannot scale everything at the same time. I can go back to that later if you want. Um, and then after like three months, we started to say that we were uh, all over France, which of course was not true. So we had uh, one photographer per region, and that's it. But it was enough to go and and to 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 go and say to clients in real estate market like uh, Center and One. Hey guys, we are everywhere and try to see if, if you can sell it. That's it. Cool. And so uh, about the interns, because I guess it's everybody's dream to uh, just say, yeah, you can you can hire, um, you know, quite inexperienced people that don't cost a lot of money and it will work. Uh, a lot of the of the companies at the family, they they don't always start by recruiting intern profiles. So how did you know? How do you either train them or know that they're going to be up for the task? Uh, well, I made the choice to be first a B2B company, which I think is a very good choice if you're not in the mobile application business, stuff like that, or, or social network stuff, uh, for you can sell something. When you can sell, you can measure KPIs and you can really understand quickly if that works. So if you are in a B2B industry, in a SaaS or whatever, you, you have to sell to companies. But it, yeah, it's not very difficult to find people that are okay to sell. If you are not into that and you 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 need to acquire uh, clients on the internet, you need to have super good people. So you cannot start with like you cannot uh, you cannot test your product with interns in marketing that I just worked for that for two months because I do not know how to use Facebook or Google AdWords and yeah. so So depending on your industry, if you start with a B two B, let's say for software, uh, starting with a few interns just to try and yourself for good. Huh? But I could not do it myself because I wasn't yeah. working. Um, if you start with uh, a few guys uh, just testing the pitch and stuff, you can really see quickly if you have a good idea or not. If you don't have a good one, you need to drop it. Okay. And do you do you train them? So if so, if anyone in B two B can take an intern from the beginning, yeah. how do you make sure that they're good, that they're up to the level, and that they they can sell like you can sell? Yeah, we're doing theater. Uh, theater. Um, yeah, like uh, I was calling them. Or they were calling me and I was like pretending to be a client. And okay, so okay. You do that so you do times, okay. two or three days at the end, they know how to do it. And they can all do it. Anyone can anyone can do it. Well, you have people that are not made for being a sale. Who? So <laughs> engineers. <Yeah. laughs> no, I mean people are naturally better at selling than others, like like for every topic. So uh, no, you need first to choose someone that looks like uh, confident, I guess, and uh, easy on I mean talking. Uh, then yeah, everyone can do it. Okay, great. When uh, you start, yeah. I mean, again, because uh, I was starting with SMBs, so TPE in French, I was starting with SMBs, like a uh, very small company stuff. Like I did not took an intern to go and sell to Airbnb, uh, you know, yeah. that doesn't work. So it depends on what you do. But if you have a software, it's a good way to test your software in the first few days or first few months. Just take a few interns and just go door to door or just open, open just call clients. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so you mentioned that you had from the beginning, so you had something you wanted to test if it sells and you defined the metrics yeah. uh, that you wanted to reach. Yeah. And for you, that would be the test if it's a success or if it's not a success. Yeah. How do you come up with those metrics? Do they just, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's like pricing, like random. No, but you need to, okay, you, 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 you so, so, so if you test something out, you have a product. I'm opening a, new, a lot of new products right now at Miro, like today. Um, so it's still the same logic. So we are trying to push everyone to have to have the same spirit. If you say uh, I'm going to test a product, but you don't have like a KPI in mind that tells you if you fail or not, you will never know if it like like I don't know. Um, I went after like I opened a mobile application and uh, and after three months you have I don't know three thousand people uh, like that sign up. I don't know if it's good or not good. So you need to first at the beginning say okay if I reach that stuff. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say okay that works. So how do you define that level? Yeah, how do you define that? Uh, you took the market size. I took the market size. 
in my in my first like uh, trial, uh, the price of the product I wanted to sell was photography for brokers, real estate brokers, one hundred dollars. I was like, okay, if I want that to 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 be a success, that means that I'm, I need to be able at least to do twenty million dollars on that in France in a few years, two to three years. If I need if I want to do twenty millions per year per year uh, in three years, that means I need to convert that amount of brokers out of the market size, which means yeah. that if after 100 calls, I don't have at least two to five people saying yes, I will never make it. So that's why I defined it. Okay, so just, yeah, do the math backwards. Yeah, okay. always um, backwards. Yeah, always backwards. Uh, great, and so then, so you said you opened every region in France, and then at some point, uh, you decided to, to you know, uh, get on the way to opening a hundred uh, countries. Yeah. Uh, at what point do you decide that it's the right time to take your business to another uh, geography? And how do you open a new country? Well, uh, actually focusing on uh, uh, small players in France was a mistake because basically uh, I was providing a way to scale photography services at a low, low price, good quality, consistency and everything. And when you talk to someone that does one shooting every six months, it doesn't really care. He's just going to, to see his friends, his photographers, like he knows, he's knowing him for like 10 years and that's it. So I realized quite quickly that I, I was having super good metrics, but it's because I was doing uh, the bois. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really pushing it, like a lot of people calling, calling, calling. So at the end of the day, you have like, you, 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 my, my, when I, when I was saying, I, I, I was thinking backwards, my, my first target was like, I need to fundraise. So I was like, okay, my first, my, I would like my Series A to be, uh, to be five millions, right? So I, I, it was in January. I was like, okay, in next, in 12 months, I need to fundraise five millions. So if I want to fundraise five millions in five months, what do VCs want to see? They want to see that you reach uh, MRR, uh, monthly run rate, between 100k to 150k per month. It's a monthly. Uh, yeah. Over the okay. So how do I, how do I reach that? And actually, I realized that even if my internal metrics, like my repeat per customers, what we're, we're super low, that by pushing the sales, like all, and calling everyone on earth, I could, I could make it. So I kept doing that, because basically on a series A, if you're a good, sales, if you're a good salesman, you can not show the metrics you want to show. So yeah. I was like, eh, this is, uh, we, have, we have this curve, this growth, it's amazing and stuff like that, but uh, no, don't look at that. Uh. <laughs> so you just put under the carpet the thing you wanted to show, and now uh, you, you just make people focus on the fact that you went from zero to 150 in not so many months, so many months. Um, but then I knew that my metrics was shit, so I needed to change. And so basically I realized that my, my first uh, focus, which was uh, scaling photography, made more sense for uh, clients that needed a lot of pictures all the time. And so I realized that basically my real clients were uh, marketplaces on two topics, the food industry, like Deliveroo, yeah. and the travel slash real estate industries like Airbnb, Expedia, blah, blah. So um, I hired someone who became my COO and his only focus was to change whole marketplaces, to, to the whole product like Miro, to be able to, to deliver what I used to deliver only in a few regions and badly, to be able to do it like on, on 100 countries, 50 different languages, time zone, everything. So you need to do, to do everything on video. And it's a very different product. And so we spent like um, eight months to do that like investing a lot of money that we don't have basically um, on this. And when we almost had it, because we had like, like this, yeah. again, we pretended that we yeah. had it and we went after selling it and this is it. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, okay, great. Um, and so did you, did, so you had um, your CEO come in, so the operations started to clarify a little bit. Um, what is it like to open a new country? Do you need to put someone there? How do you adjust to the local constraints for businesses, to the other types of industries? Uh, is it really different than opening just another region in France? Uh, so we, so uh, we, we open a country in a way that we deliver pictures over there. So we recruit, so we recruit photographers the way that Deliveroo recruits his bikers, their bikers. Uh, but we did not know, we did not have to, to be physically uh, present. When you go from selling uh, to SMBs, so TPE, to selling uh, to clients like uh, Uber Eats, yeah. you can definitely close a deal uh, through Skype. So basically we just randomly linked in and emailed everyone on earth from <laughs> Australia to Peru to blah, blah, blah. The out of 100 the outbound emails, you have two people answering. It's gonna be like, could be Google, could be whatever, it's just look, pure luck. Yeah. And then you have like uh, Expedia saying, oh, that's very interesting. I want to shoot next year, 20,000 location in uh, 48 countries. Are you able to do it? Yes. 
<laughs> and then you you know you 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 put everything in motion. But you don't you don't have to to be physically uh, present in the country. Yet you need to have people because you have time zone issues. So in San Francisco is minus nine. Or if you go to China, it's plus seven, plus eight. Yeah. So you need to to have people working at night and in a lot of different languages to be able to to manage photographers worldwide. So up until quite lately, actually, quite recently, we had only people in Paris. And then you fundraise, you fundraise stuff and you start having the time to invest on new offices and blah, blah, blah. And then you start opening offices. Okay. So a lot of people that don't sleep very much uh, wake no, up no, super no, we, early. Uh, or? You can, uh, we had just people uh, going from, uh, from 5 p.m. to uh, 5 a.m. and people starting at yeah. 7 and have just, you know. Okay. Um, not so yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so what's what's really interesting about uh, Miro, I think, is that there's um, a very intense technical product at the heart yeah. of it, which is the algorithm. I mean, maybe you can describe a bit um, what it does. Uh, and so in the in the sort of uh, intense race that you're describing to keep up with with you know whatever you're able to sell, um, how do you make sure that all the different departments, uh, so the sales, the operations, and the tech, can all work together? Um, how do you create an environment where, like, what kind of communication exists between these different uh, branches to make it work and to to be able to keep up with your with your promises? So through beers, it works really nice. <laughs> through uh, beers. Uh, through beers. Okay, great. Drinks. Yeah, yeah, it, it amazing. <laughs> now the, um, the 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 honestly, you build it uh, on, on the go. Uh, first, you're, you're 20. Everybody is like uh, very close to each other. So anyway, everyone knows everyone. Then you're 30, then you're 50, then you you onboard people every week. Then you're like, okay, we are super late on onboarding people because usually, like at the beginning of the year, we were 50, 40 people. So you do not really have to have this onboarding process and PDF and saying blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows everyone. Then you, you start accelerating a little bit and then you realize that the, all the new guys this week or the week before or the week after do not even know who I am, I have actually no idea what the company does. They have to come in, they need to build their own chair, and they just go. And so then you realize that you need to consolidate a bit of the, the, the communication of the company. Uh, but there is no easy way to do it, you just figure out. I guess, on, I mean, there is no, uh, I'm sure every company works differently. Um, honestly, you just put your hands on it and uh, you build onboarding processes, and then you, you build a code here with, yeah. uh, with VPs, then you hire. Then you have uh, people in charge of every department that you ask them to meet at least once a week that to exchange information. Then you need to, to be on every meeting to, to be sure that everyone knows. It. But even today, uh, and I think it's, just, it's the same for every like, fast growing company, uh, the communication is not like the best quality we might have. Like it's when you have, we, we hire 20 people per week on a lot of different continents now. It's the, I could not say that the communication is the best thing we, we, we did because it's very difficult at the end. So uh, you try to build a culture where everyone is happy at work. Uh, culture is a very bullshit word, honestly. Like yep. you, you read it everywhere <laughs> on every uh, medium post. You have someone talking about culture, blah, blah. Well, uh, you don't really care when you're 20. Uh, when you're really starting to go fast, to grow fast, you actually it starts meaning something. So when you did not pay attention to it before, it, it breaks things, which happened to me. So I had to fire quite so many people that were not actually in the culture I wanted to build because I did not pay attention to it, which was a mess. Uh, actually, if you, if you manage to build a culture where people like each other, like to be at work and everything, all the small things that you do badly because you cannot focus on everything at the same time, it, it's okay. You just say, sorry, uh, guys, we're going to be better at everything. We were on a retreat weekend just, uh, just last weekend with the top 60 of the company. And uh, you know you do workshop and you try to improve, you know the way things uh, work. You try to put them into motion through their own thinking and everything. At the end, it works. Like uh, there is no magic, but I think everybody does it. Like there is no and and so recipe to do that. yeah. So so your your culture is kind of a protective uh, layer against everything that everything else that might be a little bit a yeah. uh, little bit buggy. Uh, and so if you were to go back in time now, uh, so if you give recommendations to newer entrepreneurs. Uh, would you advise them to take steps to build the culture from the beginning? Uh, or would you just, you know, have them do what you did? And if so, what exactly should they be doing? If I have a few advices, well, if I start again a company, which I guess uh, will happen at some point, um, I would recommend uh, what I told you uh, on the phone when we talked first to, it's really important to, 
to think backwards from objectives. It's really the main thing that people fail is that they just think of their business as of today, like I have, I don't know, 10 people. Uh, out of these 10 people, they draw on Excel a line, like, okay, if I do 100 today, I'm going to do 200 next year because I have 100 people. And they do not think about it like, but actually, where we are, where would I like to be? Actually, I would love to be at 1,000 next year. Not, and then, okay, if I want to be at 1,000, what do I do now? Why do I need now? Well, I need uh, not 10 people, but 30. Okay, so what do I need? Well, I need money. Okay, so let's get money. And so people tend to really start from what they have. And so you have you have uh, nice growth. And I, I met someone very lately uh, for investment, and the, and the growth was super nice. But uh, I was like, why don't you do 10 times that? She was like, uh, I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> but like, it's always, I, I ask always the same question. It's always the same answers. Like, I don't know. Even for the, the company that I own on the side, uh, it's like, okay, we're going to do a five million next year. Okay, can we do 10? Uh, yes. <laughs> what do you need? Uh, 200K. All right. You know, <laughs> that would be the first advice is like, try to understand where you want to, where you would dream to be next year. And actually at the end, it's just a matter of having the money. That's only, like you just need basically to have 12 more sales or, or to have like a f uh, marketing budget that is higher or whatever. This is first stuff. Then uh, I would say, yeah, culture is important. Uh, like after, after one year, so 18 months ago, I had hired uh, people with their super nice resume from uh, McKinsey, Dell, and stuff like VP marketing, blah, blah, blah who were like uh, 40, 45 years old uh, with a nice resume, but actually they were like not, completely not in the mood of the stuff. Like it was just uh, full of uh, 20 people, interns, 20 years old people, like uh, running around like this, blah, blah, asking questions everywhere, not blah, blah, blah. It was, it, they were not used to it. It was used to something where, with high position, very far from the operation. Of it. And it was a huge mess, because first, I, first took me six months to hire, then the revenues were five times higher than everyone else. Then I needed to fire them. Then I fired them, so I had no one left. Then the people were asking why I just fired the people that I hired. So big mess. So actually, if you think your company can grow quite fast, maybe not this year, but the, next, the year after, do think about the culture, because when you have like one guy in the customer care team that is like always seeing the glass half empty, it spreads to everyone, and then it's a nightmare to get back on it, because it needs a lot of time and to management. And last point would be to not name people with a C too, too early, like CPO, ah, okay. CMO, CCC. <laughs> because uh, when you, you are six people, you don't have a CMO, you have a guy on marketing team, that's it. Yeah. And at some point, if you grow, you need a CMO, like a real one. And you cannot uh, downgrade a guy, so you need to fire him, basically. Because he's not a CMO, yeah. he's a good marketing guy, that's it. So careful with that. Like even first, often we we get the first guy we get to CTO. But mine is is, is super nice. But uh, I, I see a lot of uh, yeah, I see a lot of teams where they, they hire a CTO, so they're like three, and then and then the team uh, you have like fifty developers, and the guy is not at all a CTO. Like you need to 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 deal with so many stuff when you're fifty developers compared to what you just yourself or three guys that you need to, to manage. So yeah, the first three st stuff I would not redo again if that, that can re remember uh, would be these three stuff. Um, so there's there's one uh, one topic I want to go into. Uh, so you mentioned sort of retroactively uh, figuring out what you have to yeah. do to to get to your goal. Um, a big part of that, and uh, a question that that I hear a lot, especially in B two B companies that are the family, is uh, what is you know when do I need to stop focusing? And so you're in a market, and we, we talked about this before, but you're in a market that's extremely broad. A lot of businesses need photography and more and more because you see, I don't know, these horrible sponsored posts that by you know companies you never want to hear about and everybody just uses photography because it's a really important medium today. Um, and so I guess that everyone, everyone that saw your services and saw the quality of your photos comes at some point to knock at your door and say, hey, uh, we're, I don't know, in consumer packaged goods, we want pictures, or we're in real estate, we want pictures, and sort of all the industries come to you and ask for your service. And how do you decide which ones you tend to first when you go from one to the other? And a lot of, a lot of B2B startups have this problem. How do you focus? How do you decide which is the first one? Is it metrics driven? So I go back to the first, uh, the first point, uh, which I, I find most important in entrepreneurship. Uh, I, I just put objectives. So right now, for, for, for right now, I'm fundraising again because I guess uh, we have a good uh, momentum. You kind of fundraise every nine months, for example. So I'm fundraising 150 millions in May, and so the only question I ask myself is, 
how much I need to be in terms of, well, you have many metrics to follow, but let's say I just focus on revenue. How much do I need to be on my monthly revenue? And if the, my current business uh, is enough for me to be absolutely sure that I'm going to hit the targets, I stay on it. If I'm like 80% sure, I'm going to invest on the other 20%. So uh, okay, let's right now I focused on um, on travel and food, and I'm actually not completely sure that I can because the target are getting super high, that I can reach by May the the number I need to reach. So what I do is like basically, I sensed it like five months back, and I'm like, all right guys, we need to open e-commerce by the end of this year. And then you put pressure on people because like so I'm opening e-commerce right now, so photography for kind of every product you see online, um, on non-demand uh, business, and I'm like uh, either on my first industries. I just uh, go crazy on it and it works and that's great. Or uh, unfortunately, just a bit lower and then I, I just had this new thing that just makes me be exactly where I want to be. So I just figure out if what I do today is enough to uh, to be sure 100% that I will hit my targets, which is for me uh, fundraising because I need cash uh, to do what I want to do. Um, and then if it's not absolutely sure, I just do I, I invest on new topics and I go that like that. Okay, uh, so that that's really interesting uh, in terms of figuring out when you should release focus a little bit. Uh, another aspect of my question is, how do you decide which defocus you pick? Uh, so in the beginning, I don't know uh, which uh, vertical you began with, but let's say that today, you know, your your food targets, you're not exactly sure and you need to open to another one. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, real estate and automobile come to knock at your door. How do you... How do you decide which which one to pick? Is it instinct? Is it random? It doesn't matter. Um, you know how uh, how do you do that? It's not random for once. Um, it's not instinct either. I would say uh, I'm trying to target the industry industries where what I've built before uh, uh, is close to the new one. In it's terms of like product stuff. or in terms of product, the process and everything. Like basically, if you want to go to, I could open a fashion photography. I could open w w weddings, which I will next year. But like right now, I'm not opening weddings because it's very, very different. So uh, you do not order your photographers for your wedding like you order your photographers for your flats, right? So um, so my brother just came in, but he does not speak English. I did not tell him he was in English. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so I, I cannot go to weddings right now because then it would it would take me so much, so many guys in the development team and the product team that I would it would unfocus me from my first target, which is in May, and it to to be this revenue at this revenue to fundraise this amount. Um, so what new thing, what new thing you could do that is close to to what you already do, so that you can basically do it quicker. Um, and then there is another thing: um, is where do you want to be in three to five years? Because right now we talked about the on-demand business part of what I do, but I like building a lot of other stuff, and I'm really trying to be like the, the everything of photographers. And so I'm building a software where I basically do everything from having a job, which is Miro, to the pre-production, the production, the post-production, the which is editing, the quotes, devices, management, CRM, uh, automating, building, uh, being paid. Learning, so we we are investing a lot on a Netflix video right now because there's like a lot, huge investment on videos like documentaries. So where do you want to where do you want to be? And so I want to be like this thing where photographers, videographers, maybe later on artists, basically, but right now on this one, where I'm really like the day to day spots where they wake up and they go on there. Right? If I just focus on Miro, uh, I'm just going to be an on demand stuff. So I could be like a Uber for something. That's it. So when they want to 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 do more to make more money, they're going to to go online and do these three jobs like in the morning in Paris and just get 100 bucks, that's it, right? So if I want to be like everywhere, uh, I need to invest on other things. That's where you you raise money and you split your teams. So I have like a diff, like I like delocated a team, like I put it on another office basically, physically, like <laughs> away from everyone to focus because I really think that what they're building, which is called My Miro, is gonna be the future of, and, and so at some point you need to, to think about where you want to be in three years and, and understand where you start building your vision, which for me was uh, six months ago, because I had enough money to waste it on other stuff that I could not have before. So when you start raising a lot of money, you can start playing with your your topic. When you have like uh, when you fundraise 500k or two millions or three millions, it's not so much money. Actually, it goes away quite fast. 
you just focus on your stuff. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. One uh, one of my questions is so you uh, you had you know a few companies before as as has come up already. Um, do you, uh, is there anyone around you, entrepreneurs in the ecosystem or advisors, just people that are external to your company that have been really instrumental in helping you move forward? Uh, and how do you find them? My mother. Uh, the the brother here. My mother. Oh, ah, so, someone sorry. Is <laughs> a bit older. Uh, uh, no. Uh, no. It's quite rare, but uh, I didn't have this. Like I wouldn't say that it's good to to have someone that that that's gone through these same steps, these same same steps. Uh, but I did not to be direct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. So um, I, coming like flashing I into now uh, yeah. when you. So you, you made the processes evolve a lot. And as you describe, the processes barely try to keep up with what's happening and with all the growth that's uh, ahead of you. Yeah. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about, about sales. Um, what is your sales team structured like? Uh, and uh, what kind of processes do you have in place to uh, train them, uh, to help them perform? What kind of tools do you use? Because I think it's really interesting as you said, always to, to go from what works and, and work your way backwards. Uh, so for entrepreneurs that are starting now, just to get an idea of the, the best practices that you came up with. Uh, well, so first, I have, so I have now a lot of processes and blah, blah. Uh, I did not used to have that like uh, and quite until eight months ago or six months ago. Uh, the, the reason is that I could achieve my targets without spending time on processes and blah, blah. So right now, I don't have any CRM. For example, which is a bit weird. Right now, I don't have I don't have a CRM. We are building it, but like when, do not go into Salesforce, please. So it, it's a lot of money, a lot of time. Uh, it's it's really it's it's, it's, a, it's a huge investment and focus. So actually, we we bought what well, we we took Salesforce 18 months ago. We spent so much money on it, and it was like making salesmen waste time because then you have to click on so many buttons, blah blah. blah. So I just removed it. I paid for it because you have like this two-year you know engagement, so basically you need to pay for it, but. Um, but uh, I, I I quit the the software. The, so um, so first again, if you have one target to achieve and you do not need to invest in processes, don't or just do it at the right time because it takes time. And when you invest in processes, you don't invest in something else. Like you, I would have spent my own time in stuff that I could you know uh, invest on others. Uh, so that's the first thing. Um, then I hired a VP sales. Because at some point you can hire a VP, which is good, because they, they know perfectly their job. Uh, and so yeah, so, so now we're uh, we we process the team kind of what you know, like what you see in the SaaS industries. So we have BDR, CAM, K A M, and uh, CSM. So basically, have, we have one team BDR, uh, uh, which is focused on only uh, finding meetings, bookings meetings. So one guy needs to book 25 valuable meetings per week for one cam, and a cam is the guy who closes. So it's very, I mean, I guess everybody knows that, but it's very usual. Uh, cam means account manager. I don't know what's because basically a salesman, but let's call yeah. it account manager. So uh, you have this guy that just processes processed for uh, shooting LinkedIn and emails all day long and calling and calling and stuff. Their, their commissions are based only on the fact that they get 25 good meetings per week. Uh, if they don't, they don't have the commission. So they're not, they're not commissioned on the money they bring to the company. Right? So you have like this guy, I don't know, paying, but he, he's paid 30K and you have like this additional 15K per year of bonuses. And for the BDR guys, it's just uh, you need to, to put, put to book this 25, right? Then the account managers, the CAM, uh, they're here to close deals and they are uh, incentivized yeah, on the money they bring to the company, right? So uh, they have the same revenues, whatever, 30K plus 15, and, but they, they get their money only if they bring yeah. money to the company. And then you have the CSM, which makes sure once a client is signed, that the client do, does not churn. So churn is when a client uh, stops yeah. working with you. And how did you define the bonuses? Did, is that something that you had to, to fix over time a lot? or? Yeah, we changed it 12 times. 12? In uh, <laughs> 18 months, so you know. 
Yeah, I had uh, before in my board uh, um, investors have the, the CEO of uh, Criteo, um, and uh, he told me the first year he changed it eight times. Yeah, it's very difficult. At the beginning, you don't know the size of your targets. You don't know how much, how much they're going to like it. Like it's changing everything. So it changes so much that basically you need to change it yourself all the time. Um, and so at some point, you just fine tune it with your industry. So if I open a new company that sells uh, trees. Uh, I'm going to put some targets that are going to be the bad ones because they're going to overachieve it by 200% or on the contrary, they're going to underachieve it by 50%. So you need to adjust a little bit. At some point, you know the target, you know the, mar you know the market, you know your everything and you know that the guy uh, need to do, I, I don't know, for me, need to book one to two million dollars per m quarter. Uh, and we, we know that if the guy is good, it's the good amount of things needs to sign. Okay. Salesman. Okay, so it's normal that it changes a lot. Um, yeah, again, so what I said, like, uh, there is no, that's why I don't like to so much, you know, I told you that. To, to the, yeah. there, there is no magic, like, I'm sure everyone do, does can do it if you Iteration. have a good product and everything. Yeah. Just, it, the mindset is difficult to get, so a lot of entrepreneurs are not so good because they don't have the good mindset. But if you have the good mindset, then it's quite easy to you just put your hands on, you make mistakes every day, you just, have to not make mistakes on the big things that's it okay that's tough yeah um so the 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 last uh, point that i want to go into is uh, artificial intelligence uh because everybody always loves to hear about this um so it's uh, it's really interesting because maybe you can also describe a bit uh what the what the goal and the standards are for the algorithm that you're developing to uh, ensure the quality of your photos um, but it's really interesting because uh, there's all these debates about um, you know robots are going to take our jobs uh, and uh, what's going to be left is the creative industries and now uh, we're hearing that the creative industries are also going to have some form of artificial intelligence in them um, so can you explain uh, maybe if you've had Uh, journalists attack you with such such statements uh, and and what you say to to reply to them and what is your view on on this at Miro yeah so first if you build something do put some uh, AI and deep learning and blockchain <laughs> keywords because it triple your valuation so really go into this and find some AI that does something it's important right now it used to be internet now this is, so some guys just put blockchain on the, on the <laughs> so so do it if, if you want to fundraise it makes sense um, then the AI uh, so yeah no, uh, the it's it's algorithm are super lame right now it's a very different from a very different from a human brain so even for uh, recognizing uh, a table on a picture uh, if you have a human looks human eyes uh, even very weird tables like so weird you know it's a table like it's low so you, you know you can put a drink on it so you know it's you know it's say so ai it's very like well actually uh, the ai means a lot of stuff but like the computer vision machine learning sorry uh, it's like um, something very repetitive so you 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 feed algorithm with millions and millions and, and at some point you understand on its own somehow how it works but basically even um, a chair Uh, it's very difficult to have 100% success on a chair. For a human being, it's super easy. Like, you know it's a chair, even if it's weird. Um, so, uh, so we are super far from having like intelligent robots, really super far. Uh, what they do right now is they, they manage to repeat tasks and everything that you can repeat or learn through repeating, they are going to be way better than us. But it's like, um, it it's just goes into, they do not go into complex topics. They go into difficult topics. It's very different. On the creative part, uh, I don't know, like, like, like retouching a picture. Yeah. It's very subjective. We manage to do really nice things because we focus on, let's say, uh, a house. So when you have millions and millions and millions of before and after editing pictures of a house, the algorithm s starts understanding a little bit what it needs to do. But if you, if you fo just focus on retouching pictures, like the big pictures, like surf, weddings, blah, 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 there is so many different things that it's completely impossible for right now for an algorithm to make it work. That's why basically Adobe, Samsung, Huawei, stuff like that, which try to just improve the picture through editing, they are 50 years away from making it happen. Whereas since we focus on a few stuff, we're having quite nice results. So, I mean, AI is, is going to replace uh, 
Uber drivers and all this stuff that basically is super mathematical. But it's like one part of the of the world, and for all the rest, we still do not know what is going to be able to do that. So we are far away from that. Okay, thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you. Good luck on the